written by Andrew Smith and released in July 2018, Hour of the Cyberman is a 240th story in Big Finish's monthly range, and the second installment in the year's Cross Doctor trilogy. Minor spoilers here, people, but it's not really something I can skip over since it's really important. But at the same time, it's not. Confused? Well, here we go! The whole Doctor and Unit's relationship deteriorating plotline. Yeah, it's pretty much abandoned right off the bat. The Doctor is called back to Earth by Lewis Price to investigate a dried-up London and welcomed back by Unit with open arms. Right away, I feel like this is a misstep as Unit and the Doctor are almost always on the same page, and there is so much to unpack by pitting the two against one another that my enthusiasm for the episode dipped the moment I realized this wasn't the direction we were going. Thankfully, the Cybermen are back and their plan to convert humanity actually holds water if you pardon the pun. It's well planned, thought out, and above all, logical. I praise how they are used here as it harkens back to the 80s Cybermen stories on the television series. More attack of the Cybermen than Silver Nemesis or Earthshock. David Banks plays the Cyber Leader perfectly, while Mark Hardy's hams it up alongside him as a Cyber Lieutenant. What I did love unequivocally is the return of Daniel Hopkins, who as you may recall I really wanted to see again. And I love how Big Finish played around with the passage of time and given us a very different take on the man I enjoyed listening to in the Heliax riff. I still like Daniel, even if his ship and personality did take me by surprise. I also really like how the Doctor and Price mellowed while the Doctor and Daniel's relationship has soured a bit. A deep criticism I hold over this story is the big twist concerning the Cybermen, which is very easy to spot well before it's revealed. It's just too obvious and I can't help but wonder why no one at Big Finish could fix the script for this story so as to try a little harder to hide it. Not only that, but the twist is officially revealed much too soon robbing the rest of the story of any surprise. Truthfully, once the cat was out of the bag about what was going on, my attention waned, casually dropping as the episode built towards the climax. As mentioned, Price is back, and I like his interaction with the Doctor. Reva, the Doctor's pseudo-companion for this installment, however, is horrible. Not the character, but the actress who plays her. Frogstone just isn't believable in any of her scenes. It's almost as if she's just reading it off the paper and trying to work out how the character's supposed to feel. Her lines are flat and her character is mostly wasted, which is a shame as Reba has a lot to unpack. The bits that are, as I said, wasted on the actress and overshadowed by the plot. <laughs> Even though I didn't think this episode as powerful as its successor, I am really excited for the final part later this year with Sylvester McCoy. Let's hope Warlock's Cross ends the series on a high note.